Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is William Gore. Just call me Will. My pronouns are he, him, it. Um, I am currently getting my Bachelor's of Fine Arts in an animation and visual effects degree. And I plan right after I graduate, um, I'm going to try and pursue a Master of Fine Arts in game design. Um, um, and my goals with that are to become creative director, maybe an art director, or just be in some general leadership position or mentorship position in the games industry. If you want to know some cool stuff about me, I'm a dungeon master on indefinite hiatus. Who knows what I'm going to get back to that. We'll see. We'll see when that happens. Um, I paint. So if you're wondering what you're going to see in this presentation, paintings. Um, I also made all of the Dogwood Dead Name logos. So if you're ever wondering, um, except for like the main Woody one, that was that was Sparkle Cat 2009 that made that one, and then I adapted him into stuff. But if you're under, ever wondering who made those, it's me. It's me, guys. So you may be wondering, Will, what do you make, man? I am a transgender multimedia artist who makes paintings, comics, and other works about the tenderness and vulnerability of the FTM experience perpetual self-discovery, escapism, and persisting trans existence in a cis-normative world. Just, I'm a transgender man who makes art about being a transgender man. You don't need to know much else than that. Like, it's right there on the cover. Um, and as we go throughout this presentation, I'm going to be showing artworks that may have content that's not suitable for all people or that you may have to have preparation to see. Not like, it's not like intense or anything. We got non-sexual nudity. I'm covering up with a sensor bar because I'm protecting Dogwood Dead Name single-handedly from Twitch TOS. I know I'm like right on the front lines. There's also artwork that I have with some themes and, and allusions to fetishization of transgender people. I have some surgery recovery imagery with some blood. It's not anything graphic, but it, it, there's blood in the image. It's red. Could you believe it? And also there's some allusions to transphobia. Uh, so in this presentation, you guys won't really be seeing any of my degree related work. Instead, we're going to be seeing more of my extracurricular work that I'm very artistically invested in. So when I started like preparing this presentation, I started looking back at the art that led up to the, the work that I'm making now, and I would probably class them into a, a kind of artistic category that I'm going to call exploratory works, um, where I started analyzing masculinity and forming my own idea of masculinity and what it means to me. So during this time, in about early 2020 to mid-2022, I really looked up to very feminine men online, led me to have the urge to explore my gender expression through art. Um, at this time, I was like pretty masculine not anymore all you need to know i got long hair now I'm, I'm i'm rocking it i really just wanted to break out of this like shell of masculinity that society taught me be trying to emulate and so i was sketching i was cooking on my own time just thinking about myself and then in 2021 i had gained enough experience and knowledge to know that i wanted to create art about this experience as a feminine trans man i did some more sketching I did some more ruminating, thinking, going into isolation like I am like some sort of like nun who really needs to get close to God. And then eventually in late 2022, I start making this art. So in late 2022, what am I making? Well, we're getting somewhere. So I start taking my junior painting one class. I'm doing a lot of from life stuff. And I, I suddenly have this painting style emerge of like this very like impressionistic and or post-impressionistic style that I really loved. And I started making my first zine. And I don't know why it says first painting class on there, but you know what, what's a presentation without a little mistake? I made my first zine called No More Binders. Um, and then I made my first comic called Little Girl Trapped in the Hotel Gym, a exercise in vulnerability. And then finally my favorite work, which is called Portal to Fantasy Reverie. Um, this was a physical ARG meant to emulate like a 2014 era Wii game. Like it leaned a lot into deviant art culture of the time. Um, and it followed this story, this young girl who is exploring her gender identity through this game. So now you may be asking, Will, what was all that for? So one, self-discovery and escapism. There's a lot of 
undercurrents of upturned or delayed adolescence in my works, um, turning to fantasy to escape. Um, there's also a lot of nudity in my works. There's also references to contemporary trans mass culture with artistic pop surgery scars and monster energy, and I guess cat boys or whatever. And then of course, lastly, there's unconventional expressions of masculinity and manhood. So a lot of me during this time was devoted to kind of undoing that within myself, not really going for a collectivist approach, but more at examining myself. Um, and then most importantly, there is an emergence of the symbol, this symbol. And of course, others like it. Um, this symbol became very important because I discovered very quickly that people, when looking at my work, of course, they are going to see a figure that is feminine, is, you know, maybe not had surgery or be pre-tea, et cetera. And I soon learned that in order to, for me to like code this in my work, I needed to be more heavy handed with it, especially if I wanted like a more general, like liberal audience to be like, oh, okay, cool. Um, I needed to do that. I also needed it to be unavoidable to audiences that didn't want to see it. Becoming unavoidable has become like a very important thing to me in my process. Anyways, and so after three years, I have built a body of work that some will call trans persistence in a cisnormative world, which is true. However, I do think it's lame. So we're going with a better idea, which is transgender FTM apocalypse. Does this apply to my work? No, not entirely. Does it sound cool? Yes, absolutely. So we're going with it. So we're going to kind of get into my work throughout the last like several months. Um, just some of my, so the highlight reel of what I've done. So this piece is called The One Thing Left at the End of Time. Um, it was basically about um, how some trans men express their gender through non-human attributes, just such as wolves and other stuff like that. And I kind of wanted to sink into a more primordial aspect of gender identity. Um, the second painting is called Red Letters. This painting is like the pinnacle of will acrylic treatment. My favorite paint is acrylic. I am ride or die for acrylic paint. This painting was one an exercise in um, painting only a portion of somebody's face. Also leaning more into red tones. I tend to really like blue in my paintings. Sue me. And it was also made after my friend got top surgery. I was really cognizant of the fact that while he was going through his recovery process, he was being hounded by family members and people that he loved about the choice that he made. Um, and so it was kind of made with the undercurrents of that. Like we are recovering from surgery and yet we cannot really recover both psychologically and physically because people are hounding us when we should be, you know, in a safe place. Um, and all these, the, both of those works were made during my art residency at my college, but I have been the student director of this residency for the last two semesters, and I hope that continues forward into the future because I'd be making good works in there. Um, but now we're going to move on to some work that I've done over the summer um, before my senior year. This painting is called The Hole We Fall Into. Um, it is a painting that I wanted to challenge myself with to paint on two panels and see what I could do with it. So I decided to make like a separation between the surface and under the water. Um, and also during this time, I have been working with watercolor um, to make some tiny little like paintings. Like these are like, if you're wondering why any of these look like, like ass in the photos, it's because one, I took them with my iPhone and the camera is kind of broken. And two, I was like taking a picture of like a four by three inches of like, like paper. Okay. Like, don't judge me. Um, a lot of me during this time is me trying to figure out how to adapt my acrylic style for a watercolor class that I'm taking um, next semester. Um, paintings that we have are called Self-Made Achilles, uh, Breakdown Slushy and Tired Mouse. Um, and then for my very most recent painting, um, this these are definitely my favorite painting since my Red Letters painting. They are both sister paintings called The Boy Wife and Dress Up. These paintings are me basically ruminating on kind of the state of being a feminine trans man and what that means in society. And a lot of that 
that comes with fetishism and but also this kind of like freedom to determine who you're going to be what self-made man you're going to be they were both exercises and just painting in like one hue um, which i chose blue um and i wanted to just like do this like high contrast vibrant almost like eye searing kind of style um i really like how it turned out and i am going to um do some pink hued paintings i don't know what those are going to look like but i've been planning them for the last two weeks but yeah, that is my artwork. Um, if you're wondering where to find me, you can find me at my portfolio, willgore.card.com.co. I did not say any of that correctly. You can see it on the screen. Uh, my email, if you have any inquiries or questions for me, is williamgore2002 at gmail.com. My Kofi is at clericlock. My Instagram is, and Twitter is also at clericlock, but with a zero. If you're wondering if anything is going on with me in real life land in about mid-October, I will announce a more certain date at a later time. I have a joint show at my university with my friend Hannah Zebels, and I'm probably going to do a kind of like Zoom artist talk. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Uh, but yeah, have a nice day, everybody.